Hello everyone, so you've seen the title, let's talk about references. If somebody ever told you that references are cheating, then they most definitely have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to art. Most of the old masters that we look to for inspiration, whose paintings are hung on the walls of museums, most of their paintings were paintings of real life, a location they visited, a field they were stood at, literally just another person sat in front of them. The whole purpose of reference is to guide your art process. Your hand and brain is the actual artist, they do the work. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. There's this concept called your mental library. If you draw a lot of faces then, the knowledge of how far apart the eyes should be, where the ear goes, how to change expressions, is called your mental library. And your mental library of faces will be much greater than a landscape artist who never paints portraits. But let's just say you, the portrait artist, wants to draw a landscape. Well, you don't have the mental library to know where things should be and how to draw trees and mountains, etc. Which is where reference comes in. And as you draw, you're basically draining knowledge from the reference and putting that into your mental library. And even more so if you're a beginner artist, you have a very small to downright non-existent mental library. No offense. So that's why it's especially important to have references as a beginner artist so that you're not constantly guessing how to draw and instead draining that knowledge from the reference into your own brain. And that's how you really improve. Drawing from imagination just really doesn't work well when your mental library is small because your brain doesn't really know what it needs to do and instead will play some funny little tricks on you and tell you the wrong way to draw something. Alright, with that out the way, let's just actually get into my top spots for gathering references. First up on the list is Pinterest. Pinterest is actually my number one spot for gathering references and that's because they, by far, have the best recommendation system for photos. Google search is great, I mean if you want to look up anything specific then Google search will just do the trick. A great tool for that use. If I need to just search up leads reference, I can search for it pretty quickly on Google. Quick tip by the way, try and be as descriptive as possible so that you can get the best images. So instead of searching up tree canopy, I'll search up tree canopy yellow light. Also by Google search, really any web browser with images will work too. Anyways, let's get back on track. Anyways, with Pinterest, when you search for something, in just a couple of uses, the Pinterest algorithm will learn exactly what you're looking for the next time you hop on, on the app. On top of that, it will show you images that are similar to the one you clicked on. So for me, as an example, I do a lot of portrait art. You can see my feed is just filled with a bunch of portraits slash human focused photos. But it's not that it will just serve me a portrait art, it will serve me images that all have a certain style to them. Most of these photos contain a nice color grade, meaning that colors are not just straight out of a camera lens. Most have a good story behind them, and they have some dynamic lighting, etc. Stuff that is hard to find through Google search. That's also another difference between Google and Pinterest. Pinterest recommends me photos that inspire me to draw, while most of the time I'm using Google search to just look up a specific thing, like a tree or a basket. Okay, now I'm going to share some tips to create your perfect Pinterest feed. Like I said before, I gravitate towards story pieces and unique color graded photos. So what I'll do first is I'll search up Korean dramas because I've learned that K-dramas have some really nice screen grabs for reference. Now that I find an image that I like, I'm actually going to go over and create a new board and save that image to the board. Now what that actually does is it's basically telling Pinterest, hey this image is going to be separate from the rest of my searches and my other boards. Although in this instance they're actually pretty similar to my artsy images board. But you got the point. Okay, so once I save the image, now I'm going to scroll down and as you can see, there's a bunch more images that are all similarly themed towards that original image. Like you can actually see images from the same show. But let's just say I don't want to be like recommended couple focused photos anymore. I just want one person as my subject. So I'm going to go click on this image. Now it still keeps the same color grades, same storytelling, but now as you can see, there's a lot less couple focused photos being recommended to me. So hopefully now, you can see how as you add certain images to your board, it's going to train the Pinterest algorithm to give you those types of images. And the more photos I click and save to my board, the more training I've given to Pinterest so that they can recommend me the best possible photos in the future. Okay, so now that I have a board of all my images, if I go back to the homepage and I click the new board that I just created, now all the images that are recommended to me fit the style of the board that I just created. If I want to go like see the actual images that I saved, I'm going to just go click on my profile and then click on the board with all the photos I recently saved. So just keep that in mind. Homepage is where Pinterest will recommend images that fit a certain board and your profile is where you find and view the photos that you saved into a specific board. And that's all it takes. Now you have a well-trained, personally curated Pinterest feed. So the next time you hop on, 
I think you'd just be absolutely amazed at how well Pinterest will recommend you photos that you like, and hopefully inspire you to draw something amazing. On top of that though, if you want to tune your feed even more, like on an individual photo basis, you can go and click on the arrow beside your profile on the top right of the screen. Then on the drop down, click on tune your home feed and the more options section. When you're there, you can see all the images that you've viewed in the past couple of days, weeks, months. <laughs> I don't know how long this goes, but you basically have an overview of all the images you recently looked at. I mean, look at this, six weeks ago, nine weeks ago. But anyways, you can tick which photos you don't want influencing your Pinterest feed. For example, here on this day, I was looking at a bunch of animal references, but I don't want them in my feed for the future though. So I'll just untick every single one of those boxes and then boom. Now Pinterest knows, hey, don't recommend me these types of photos. So yeah, I mean, that's as much fine tuning as one could ask for. I don't usually mess around with this though because I found my board still recommends me amazing photos that are just good enough for me. But if you want to go even more in depth, then it's definitely a great tool to use. All right, another amazing place to gather references is actually from movies and films. Films almost always have that color grade on them that I talked about earlier. So the screen grabs from films actually have more feeling and the colors have more thought behind them instead of just a raw image straight from a camera. The website I use to gather film references is called evanrichards.com where he has a ton of screen grabs from films from 2021 to all the way back until like the 90s and stuff like that. <laughs> like there's some black and white films here. The reason why screen grabs from movies are great is because there's a director and a bunch of other people who operate the camera, set up the lighting and composition. Like their entire job is to make sure that the shot is good. On top of that, then there's post-production pumping up the visuals to another level after the director's input. So basically you have like a bunch of people working on the way a scene should look, which is why you get a lot more interesting and cool compositions and lightings from these references. You can also look toward animated films and just look at their screen grabs too. They have like an added layer of having a lot of visual artist input behind it. So if that's what you're looking for, that's also a great tool. Okay, so onto the third reference gathering tool. And I say it's a tool because I'm talking about using 3D software to create pose references. There's a lot of great free websites out there that allow you to get a 3D model and mess around and create the exact pose you want. You don't have to fumble around trying to find the reference with the exact pose that you want. Instead with these tools, you can just build the perfect reference out yourself. And when you have the ability to build it out yourself, you have that creative freedom to create the most insane dynamic pose you can think of. Some of the software takes a little getting used to, not gonna lie, especially if you never touched 3D before, but I promise you it's all very intuitive and you'll get used to it eventually. It just takes a little bit of time to get used to, but the benefit is that you get quick, easy references, so sounds like a good deal to me. And finally, I think one of the most important ways to get references is to actually just go outside people. It really is, trust me. I know it's hard, you know, being in the comfort of your home, drawing is very relaxing, very comfortable, but trust me, going outside and painting what you see in front of you is just an incredible way to draw. I don't think there's anything that compares to real life references, because when you're outside and you're drawing the stuff that's in front of you, it's just you and your art. No camera quality, photo color grading, it's just life in front of you and how your brain interprets it. When you're looking through a photo, your brain really isn't working as hard and you're sort of just trying to copy the photo reference. But when you're in real life, I feel like your brain works to interpret what you see and just starts to draw things a little more creatively with a little bit more expression. To hold my point though, like, you know the feeling when you're outside and something is incredibly beautiful, so you go and take a photo of it, but then you realize that the photo just doesn't do the actual scenery any justice. It's way more beautiful through your eyes. Well that's why it's all the more important to paint what your eyes actually see. That's the big reason to go outside and paint, because the feeling that you see usually gets lost in a photo, and the feeling, what you're experiencing firsthand through your own eyes, is what you want to be shown and painted into your drawing. And don't just think you have to be in some insane city with amazing architecture or like a grand force to be able to do this. There's just so much beauty in everyday life that you gotta learn to enjoy. I truly admire James Gurney because he draws the simplest of subjects. He'll paint like a barn or a house and a tree, but just the way he paints, the way he does lights and shadows, it really just tells a great story even if the subject isn't like a grandiose canyon pass. Because he's not just painting what he sees but also painting what he feels. James Gurney talks a lot about energies and feelings about the scenes he draws, and I fully adopt those ideas. When you're outside, your brain does a lot more interpreting that is unique to you, and only you can capture the feeling much better than a cold photo. 
Professional photographers usually need some form of color grading to replicate how they felt taking the photo. And without that color grade, there's usually just a little bit missing to really capture the subject. So don't be afraid to just sit down, sit down on a local bench and just draw what you see. With that said, those are my five favorite ways to get reference. Let me know in the comments if you got some recommendation references that I missed. I always love to find new ways to gather reference. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more. Bye bye.